What's up guys? Today is finally Friday. Thank God. Finally Friday. Finally. Finally Friday. Finally Friday. It's been a hell of a week. That's one of them with a V. Hell of a week. Anyway, Hamilton just pulled up outside, so let's go take a look, see what he's got, because finally, something good on a Friday. Y'all come on. Still got the Sonic Blue Box. Yeah, for now. We're trying to find it a permanent home, though. That's a pretty color. Pretty color. Oh, he's happy now. Yeah, he said, I know what that is. Oh, I'm pretty anti. I saw them on your Facebook page. Yeah, if they buy one, one out of ten chance on getting in on the electric bike giveaway, and have time to get it to get it put together, but we have it on here next week. Electric bike, that'd yeah. be cool. Can we test drive it? Yeah. That's what I need, electric bike. If I'm gonna be riding one, it's gonna be electric. Well, I'm way too lazy to pedal. <laughs> there, Bill. Bill that come fully loaded with cars. software for cars. <laughs> That's all Ethos nice Pro. That dinner. one's actually discontinued now. Oh. That one got replaced with the Ethos Edge. We got that one sold. We're going to drop it off here in a little bit later. Golly, then. So you said 10 of them, you done sold six of them? And no, sold, no, all together. Oh, okay. I done sold two of them so far. Boy, if a feller needed a ratchet. Like you got them, Yeah. I took the TV out and put my torque tester up here just for a nice shot right there. I'm set a bunch of impact sockets, so make my top door the metric impact door, and then we'll do the bottom out the standard impact door. Shoot, yeah. Uh, that looks good up there, too. Yeah, now my drawers look bare because I had all that and all this in one drawer, <laughs> so. <laughs> I have to order some more. Yeah. Yeah, that is sharp right there. I got some more magnetic strips on the way. I'm going to put some more over here. Shoot. Yeah, that looks good. Well, I think what we need to do today for something different is do Hamilton's top 10 snap-on tools. Like top 10. The top 10 things that... uh. He sell the most of and uh, thinks the best there is. That'd be uh, good. My number one out of top 10 would be this right here right off the bat. CT761. CT761. I agree with that. If you ain't got one of these, you need to get one. There's something wrong with you. That's for sure. The baddest little 3 8 gun on the market they for the size. Awesome. Uh, you can get the bigger ones. Probably don't put out more power, but the size wise, the weight on this, these jokers work. Um, my number two now would be the long neck ratchet. Yes, I agree with that. I love that. Thing. This is probably my second favorite tool I have in my own box now, besides the three eighths. Uh, my number two, probably before, probably been the regular three eighths ratchet. The rated at forty five foot pounds. It can manually hold up to two hundred foot pounds of torque. Um, that's putting out on it, getting two hundred foot pounds out on it. If I'm trying to break. A boat loose. Um, that is a bad tool, right? That's there. a bad tool. My number three would probably be the Apollo scanner. Everybody needs a diagnostic tool. Uh, this is Smart Diagnostics. Um, this is a bad. Smart Diagnostics has changed the way scanners are used. I got two more of them back here. I got to drop one of them off. Uh, today, I got a guy coming from Russell, Alabama to meet me, one of my other shops. He tried one out. And he said, I gotta have one, so he's gonna make me here in a little bit and get it. They're bad to the bone. They are bad to the bone. I know um, the Pro Link, I love it, and that's more advanced than even the Pro Link, you know. Yeah. 
they they just or here's an example of smart diagnostics right here when you scan something you go to your pids list this is what your pids is going to look like you got a list of everything on here mm -hmm. you got to know what all the values if they're good or not good because they're going to show you can graph them you can look that stuff up but why you don't do that why you don't spend hours or i mean if it takes you minutes to go through them if you already know you're a top tier diagnostic tech and you know i gotta look at these four right here hey you know which four it is smart diagnostics it's gonna block out all the ones that you don't, that need. You don't need or then they'll block them out it's gonna throw a red flag up on here but we block them out so we can show you oh, damn. but you can see it's gonna show a red flag up and there's another one that has a blue flag the blue flag is saying that this necessarily isn't the problem but you might want to look over it this way too Check it out. could be a problem right. or it has been in the, in the past uh, that would be my number three and along with number three probably the zeus the zeus is top tier mm -hmm. hands down the best diagnostic tool on the market um, way ahead of everything else it's just twice the money or two and a half times the money of the apollo right. so the apollo is more of your regular mechanics got, uh, tool um, number four would be the snap-on ratchets for sure. I agree uh, with that too. They are they're nice. just a flex head, but I mean, any of them, it could be any of the ratchets. 80 tooth, quarter inch to 72 tooth. They're super fine. Uh, there's other ratchets on the market that got more than these. I ain't gonna name no brands, but like Gear Wrench, uh, 120 tooth. They don't feel this smooth. Matco's, 88 tooth. They just don't feel this smooth. Right. I haven't ever pulled one apart to count it and see how they're coming up with their 88 teeth. But like the half inch, 82. I mean, just super smooth. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, that's any of our ratchets from the quarter, three eighths, half inch, they're all are super smooth. Uh, number four, or not number four, number five, would probably be the Blue Point 87 piece Torx bit set. It mm -hmm. comes in the hard case. You got Torx bits, got hex bits, tamper proof. Um, it's 87 piece, I think it retails for 340 something, 350, somewhere in that price range. A great set to have. Sell a bunch of them. I think in the past month, I probably sold eight in the past month. Right. Super nice tool to have. Um, number six, my number six best tool would be, I probably stay in the Blue Point area still right there, and the uh, BOPG SSC. 100 or the 155 set. I do got both of them down here. Yep, that's the one I got. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, just a great, I'd call it a tool, but a great tool to have put in your truck, mm -hmm. put a one in the bottom of your tow box. If you need to go out in the parking lot or something, you can grab this up, carry it with you, and have, you can do a lot of stuff with this right here. Yep. That's why I like mine. Yep. One case, it fits in the toolbox easy. And, and they're tough. Everything's oh, right there to go. Blue Point cases, lifetime warranty. I mean, you can't beat that. A plastic case got a lifetime warranty on. You're That's not going right. to beat that. That's a good pick so far. Yep. Um, number seven, what you see, I sell a lot of hammers. I really enjoy hammers, but I probably wouldn't go with number seven on that. I'd probably go with our wrenches. I just got, I saw a lot of wrenches still too. That's not in the plank drive plus ones. But here, this is the 5 -8 standard plank drive plus, ratcheting in, super smooth, super thin, just a nice wrench all the way around. All our wrenches are. Now, we saw a lot of wrenches. I really enjoy uh, using them. Makes it a lot easier than some of the other ones out there for sure. They're definitely thin. I like them. Yep. Um, number eight. I'm not sure if I'd go with the hammers or the screwdrivers. We got a couple different kinds. You got the square in, and you have the instinct handle. I like the instinct handle better myself. It just feels like better mm -hmm. grip. I sell probably equal amounts now since they brought the square handles back. Right. Uh, I mean, and they feel good too. These have been around for a long, long time. Uh, snap on, drop that, went to a different grip. I brought them back. It was a great thing they did. I'm glad they did. I saw a lot of them. A lot of people love them. Um, I love the Instinct handles. Oh, uh, yeah. By far my favorite. I mean, just, when you look at them up close, 
I mean, you can see it's not just a triangle handle. We got grooves, all different grooves on here. Um, and these grooves right here, and even for you to hold on, is so if you set it down on the surface, they don't roll. They off. don't roll. Mm -hmm. uh, nine. Mm, probably would go to our air tools. Uh, it could be the air hammer. It could be the half inch or the uh, three eighths. I seen Clay did a test on the three eighths yesterday. Put out 600 foot pounds. Uh, I think that's the, what the torque wrench went up to. I'm not sure how much more would have went than that. I mean, super amazing gun. We sell. I ain't even got one on here right now. I had two last week. I sold both of them. Uh, the air hammer is probably my number one sales in the air tools. Yeah. The three eighths probably the number two sales in the air tools. That's a bad little dude. At it is. Three twenty five. And this one right here is a, the PTS one thousand is making a big climb in the air tools. Uh, if you do any type of cutting and you need an air saw, give it a try. Ask your dealer if you got a demo one that you could use for a week. Right. You'll be super happy that if you do a lot of cutting, I mean, this is what you need. That's gonna do it to you. Uh, and last but not least would be our sockets for sure. Uh, there's their flank drive also. They don't come to a sharp point. They're just like the wrenches. You're not catching it on the corner. You'll catch it on the side. Gives you, I can't remember, 20 or 30 percent more uh, torque pushing down on the uh, nut itself because like I said you're not hitting the corners you're hitting the side so you're not worried about rounding them off so much right. I'm just gonna help you get a better bite be a little bit stronger and easier on your toes you ain't put so much strain on your toes either that is awesome that's a good list dude it's yeah, like you what, sell snap on tools or something I, I try to <laughs> we try <laughs> All right, a lot of people fuss about the cost of snap-on tools, and they say Harbor Freight tools are just as good and all that. So explain, like what me and you talked about, let's say a guy works in a shop and he decides to buy Harbor Freight wrenches. All right, first of all, I get around with my mechanics. I got some mechanics to do that. Uh, I'm not sure why. A lot of people want to go buy the horrible freight ones. They think that uh, Kyle's compared to a snap-on uh, wrench for might say 30 or 35 dollars uh, for one wrench. A lot of people are like, well, that's expensive. Uh, I mean, it might be expensive, but it's making you money. It's not like that you're buying it and not using it. Uh, people want to go to horrible freight and they won't get one. So this one costs them five dollars. Well, I think, what's well, 25 or 30 dollars cheaper? Well, the initial cost, yes, it is. I mean, I understand that. But let's say this, let's say if you break uh, your wrench three times a year, we're gonna swap it out. Snap on, we're gonna come to you every week. Uh, so that's not costing you any money. You don't have to take no time off work, so that's not costing you any money. That snap on wrench is gonna cost you 30 or 35 bucks. One time, you're done with it. As long as you don't lose it, I mean, you're great, the last one you gotta buy. Uh, the horrible freight ones, you go down there, say, average 15, 20 dollars an hour, we're gonna stay with 15. If there's one in your town and you go fifteen dollars an hour, so that's fifteen bucks for your rents already. The rents don't cost you five dollars. Alright, so now you got twenty dollars invested in that five dollar wrench. And then say like I said, it's gonna break three times throughout the year. Uh, this example may break three times in a week. You might break a snap one three times in a week. I'm not sure, but we'll just say example three times. But by the time you drive back down there, uh, Three more hours at fifteen to twenty dollars an hour. Now that five dollar wrench is gonna cost you sixty or seventy. And we're not even talking about your gas. Let's say you got five or ten dollars in gas, so now you got another fifteen to thirty dollars invested in the wrench. So now that five dollar wrench, you done got over a hundred dollars in the wrench just by replacing it three times in one year. Uh, the snap-on wrench costs you thirty-five dollars. You only got thirty-five dollars invested in the wrench, and you, let's say you still replace it three times in a year. Tell me which one's cheaper now: the thirty-five dollar one or the five dollar one that you got over a hundred dollars invested in after a year. I, I know we everybody's off the common core math right now, but common core or simple math that snap on is cheaper. <laughs> I, I might be hearing things, but I, I could have swore I heard you say horrible freight instead of harbor freight. Yeah, horrible freight. They misspelled it on the building. Oh. That okay. horrible freight is how they pronounce it. Though. And they misspelled it in a bunch of cities. Somebody's going to be pissed off when they go going to have to yeah. climb up on top and change all the signs. But yeah, they got spelling problems for sure. All right, talk to them about why snap on tools cost more than some of the other brands. A lot of snap-on tools cost more than some of the other brands. Uh, one is most of our, our hand tools, our pliers, our screwdrivers, 
our sockets, our wrenches, our diagnostic tools. We make that's all our own stuff. We don't rebrand our tools. Uh, yes, we do got some rebranded stuff out there. Blue Point is re lighter. Blue Point is rebranded. I mean, we do sell uh, some rebranded tools, no doubt. Um, I'm not sure of the exact percentage that Snap On as a company sells. I'm not sure of the percentage that I sell. Um, but most of my stuff is American made tools. Um, I'm selling to people in America working that they know they're getting a high quality tool that's going to work for them day in and day out to help them get their job done, help them provide for their family if they got one or whatever that they want to provide for. Uh, but more than that, you're paying for service. Uh, with my guys, I feel like they're paying for service. I wake up every day. Uh, I'm on the road by 6.15 or 6.30 every day. Some days I don't get home until 10 o'clock at night because I'm out there servicing my guys. It's Friday. My wife and kids is going to a football game tonight when they get home. I'm going to go meet a guy in Alabama because he's wanting a scan tool. I'm going to drive an hour away from my house after I leave Boonville at 5.30 today. So I'm not going to get home on a Friday night until minimum is going to be 8 o'clock tonight. By the time I go drive an hour, meet him, spend an hour with him, and an hour back home. To me, I'm selling my service, uh, and with that, you're getting snap-on tools. Like I said, this is mostly made in America by American people uh, supporting Americans. I mean, you got you're helping other people. They're the same thing. You're helping yourself too. To me, I mean, that's the best thing that you could do right there. Ain't now, Snap-on owns their own steel plants and stuff, right? Uh, well, we own our own, yeah, we, our own steels from ourselves. All of our steels, all of our itself, our toolboxes, to our screwdrivers, to our pliers, everything is all virgin steel. We don't, uh, when you break a pair of pliers, we're not going to melt these down or take this one off this pliers and this one off this pliers and put them together. We don't melt them down and reuse it. They uh, melt it down with some cheaper quality steel and they resell it to other companies. I'm not sure what other companies that they use that buys it, but all these, every set that you see, come from virgin metal. Uh, that's part of the cost of why uh, the cost is high on some of them. Uh, I'm not gonna say that some of them don't sound expensive sometimes when you say a price on them, but like I said, service and the quality uh, of what you're getting is why you pay the prices that you do on a lot of stuff. Uh, like Clay said, we're using our own steel, um, in our own factories. We got one, I ain't even got a list, I do got a list, I gotta look it up and see where all the factories are. We got one that's an hour up the road from us right now over in Alabama. We got one that's two hours up the road from us in Tennessee that uh, I'm not sure the amount of people that they got up there, but and exactly what all they do, each one of them, I get a list and I'll have that for y'all next week and we go over that stuff. But it's not a 13 year old boy in a sweatshop. Yeah, getting his hand cut off if he don't get enough. Chinese sockets or Korean sockets or wherever they come from cut off because he ain't getting it done like he's supposed to be. That's right. Is that good enough excuse for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So I had a uh, another mishap with my little 14 4 polisher. So I'm going to put the video in here right now. And that way you guys can take a look at uh, what happened to it. As you can see, it's not been abused, beat up, skin up, dropped kicked across the shop or nothing like that. Brandy. So, take a look at these videos. They just don't put enough vents in them or something. I don't know. I think the uh, the speed that they turn, like I said, 15,000 RPM and high, 4,500 low. Yeah. So 4,500 RPM high for a cordless tool. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure what the ratchets are, but they're not nowhere near that. But 15,000. It don't sound bad on that one, but this is funny though. This yeah. is on low. That's what I had on it. Same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's what it threw me off when you sent me that video, but I seen a lot of them smoke and keep going. I got one guy that his smokes, 
I, I swear he pours transmission fluid or something in it because it just smokes like crazy and he thinks it's the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> he does, I mean, he loves it. But uh, I'm out on high, just <laughs> throwing stuff off. Probably got See, mine will still work today. I ain't tried it since that smoke packet come out of it. Oh, it ain't doing nothing now. You can smell it. Smell it. You gotta see. You gotta smell it? <laughs> you gotta smell right in my hole up there. Ready? Go. She burned up. Man, I took it. After I shot that video, I took the battery out of it and laid it in the center of the shop floor in case it, <laughs> in case it decided to fire. flame up. I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. All right, so we tested the uh, 3 8 gun. And this is the half inch version of it? Yep. What's it supposed to do? Um, it needs to be 100%. Eleven ninety. Break the weight. So Eleven hundred ninety. Eleven hundred ninety. Just shy of twelve hundred foot pounds. Like I'm not even going to attempt. Even if you said, "Hey, I'll loan you that tool, <laughs> and you do a torque test on it," it's going to take me and Bill a week to get over the up and downs and up and downs of a thirty eight test on the MG three twenty five. I will loan it to you. You got to start at a hundred though. Start way low like you did on the. <laughs> do it by tens. <laughs> Man, where the hell ratchet out on the torque wrench? <laughs> Man, I'm gonna tell you, what did you think about that test? I mean, I thought it was, I mean, pretty amazing for the fact of that it would did 600 foot pounds with uh, even with the adapter on it. I cause know that, adapters <laughs> cause torque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that has been all the comments have killed me. I died out laughing with well they. Especially when it comes to the Milwaukee ones or something besides the Snap-on one. Everybody's like, well, the adapters cause torque loss on it. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But every test had the same exact setup. The same, both the same adapters with the same socket. Yep. Uh, so that's what was the hilarious part of it. But yeah, even with the adapter that's still capable of doing 600 foot-pounds on a gun that's rated for around 400 was uh, I didn't. I Pretty was amazing. thinking about 475 was going to top it out, and then when we got there, didn't have no sweat, and uh, hell, I didn't think we'd ever get to the end of it, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> and, and you know, the the trolls that want to sit back and, and say, well, oh, well, maybe it's this, or maybe it's this, that's probably some 36-year-old guy still living with his mama, living in her basement, sitting in his underwear, and that's all he has time to do is sit back and watch videos. He's probably waiting for his Fortnite game to download so he can get back to playing <laughs> Fortnite or something, I imagine. I know it's a bad gun. People will slice it, dice it, flip it, twist it, however they want to, any way they want to do on that test. That MG325 is a bad a bitch. Bad I day. don't care what you want to say or how you want to look at it or twist it. That's a bad, bad little gun. Yep, it's a bad dude for sure. And if that one will do that much more than what the... In, 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 can you imagine if we had that thing hooked up to like a 120 PSI hose or a half inch hose running 120 or 120 feet? Uh, that's just a 3 8 hose we got. At 90 PSI, which mm -hmm. is less than what most shops run. Most shops don't run 120 to 140. Yep. Anyway. Well, I mean, you know, our tire line, it, it's wide open. You know, it's 125 yeah, or so, but, you know, our two lines, 90. So, it is what it is. That's a bad dude. Bad dude. All right, guys, you've seen Hamilton gave us a pretty good list today of his top 10 items, and I agree with a lot of them. Hopefully that'll clear up some of the explanations with some of you guys that don't own snap-on tools or not familiar with snap-on tools, why they cost more than Harbor Freight or some of the um, store brand tools. So there you go. There's your answer. Anyway, let's take a look and see what we got today. The first thing Wild Bill bought is an itty bitty, teeny weeny, solid chrome baby extension. Um, we got a video coming out on uh, APU repair and Bill had to use one of mine and we'll explain that in that video why this is such a handy thing. 
But that part number is a FX1. So, little bitty, tiny extension. And, as you guys seen, my polisher that the smoke pack let out of. Um, well, let me give you a quick rundown real quick. Everything electronic has got a, a, a smoke pack in it. And if you ever let the smoke out of that pack, well, it quits working. So, anyway, you seen the video, what happened, mine definitely let the smoke out. So, we warranted that out, got a brand new one. So, maybe this one's got a little bit tougher smoke pack inside. The next thing I got is another hat, just like the one I got last week, because I really like this hat, super comfortable. If your dealer's got them, I highly recommend picking one up, because these things are very nice. And the last thing that I purchased is this booster pack. And you're probably like, why are you buying this booster pack? Well, let me tell you. Hamilton's truck was here and he left everything on in it. We went and ate lunch, come back, and his truck battery was dead. So, so 6 7 Cummins, and this thing jumped it off like it was no tomorrow. So, I was extremely impressed with this. It's made by a company called NoCo, it's the Genius Boost HD. Part number is a GB70. It's supposed to have 40 jump starts per charge. Um, 15,700 joules for most regular jump box this style have 6,950. This impressed me a lot. It was not charged, it just come charged with whatever the factory shoves in them. And it barely had a light on and still jumped that truck. So, must be pretty good. So that's why we got that. Anyway, that's my video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, kind of enjoyed the little chit-chat back and forth with Hamilton and me and Bill on the truck today. Like always, be sure to hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe right down here below. Just hit that subscribe button. It's free. It don't cost you a dime. That way, you will always get the newest, freshest, most awesomest content that we can give you guys absolutely free of charge. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful weekend. We will catch y'all next time. All right, guys, y'all see how heavy, heavy duty this is? It's one of them San Quentin shanks right here. If you ever have to go to prison, San Quentin, somewhere like that, that's what you need to take with you. Good and heavy. And it's got a lifetime warranty, so if you stab somebody, you can get it warranted if it breaks. Is it warranted if you stab somebody and the tip breaks on? Well, you don't tell me what you had to do. I'm wiping the blood off of it. <laughs> <laughs> there you hey, go. Man got to do what man got to do. That's it. Stay alive.